so from my experience, clinical negligence is when someone has received treatment and it has been below the standard expected of a reasonable medical professional. This can cause people to financially lose out or cause them injury. And we will look into whether those injuries have then affected that person beyond the medical treatment they were already receiving from their practitioner. This will then hopefully ensure that they can get put back into the position they would have been in by providing rehab and funding so that they can live the lifestyle they should have been. I'm inspired every day to continue to work in this, this job and to really um, be glad of the job that I'm doing because I think that I get the chance to help people when things have gone wrong, when they feel at their lowest, when they can feel violated and let down. And I'm very grateful to be doing the job that I'm doing and to, to get to investigate and listen to people. Um, and we get the privilege of doing that. So that's, that, that, that's, that's wonderful to be able to do that. We'll start by asking the clients why they think they have a claim or their concerns of their treatment and we'll take some details around that. Once we're at a stage of investigating medical records and ex expert reports, we can use our in-house midwifery and nursing team to support us with this in order to tease out any issues we might have. In a claim such as clinical negligence, we have to show that not only was there a level of care that was beyond a reasonable standard, but also that that care caused someone an injury. For example, someone already might have cancer and are already going through treatment, but did a delay in that diagnosis cause them to have more aggressive treatment or a worse outcome than they already might have had. You really need a specialist clinical negligence solicitor if you suffered as a result of a, a, a medical malpractice or a medical mistake. You need a specialist. We're in the fortunate position of being a market leading specialist firm. We've got many solicitors who have such a great wealth of experience, um, leading experts in most particular niche areas of, of clinical negligence, because all sorts of different types of medical negligence. Um, as there are all sorts of different medical specialisms. Um, I think that I've worked as a, a, a medical negligence lawyer um, just about exclusively since I qualified. Um, and those years of experience uh, give you insight into cases, give you a wealth of, um, of contact and particular specialists that you can call upon both to uh, identify whether there's been some substandard practice um, and how to go about putting things right and um, what kind of rehabilitation a person needs. Our clinical negligence team leave no stone unturned. We really drill down into our clients' concerns and the medical issues, ensuring that each aspect of the claim is fully investigated. We also seek guidance from our medical experts in respect of any trust policies and also any national guidance to ensure that we build our case appropriately. Our clients are often experiencing some of the most difficult times in their lives and it can be challenging to discuss these really difficult moments that they've experienced. It's really important to me that I build a rapport with my clients to ensure that they feel comfortable exploring these situations, going over events that were traumatising for them. By building a rapport and going at the client's pace, this allows us to get the most detail and really understand the client's circumstances because it might not just be affecting the client themselves, but also their wider family, their work relationships, so we can really understand how to help that client. One of the crucial things about the lawyer's role in a clinical negligence investigation is damages and making sure that the client gets the appropriate level of damages. We have to be fastidious about this. We have to make sure that we get uh, clear evidence as to the harm that's being caused. And then we have to apply legal principles. Um, there's uh, statutory sums, there's guidance, there's, um, there's case law that all 
help us uh, quantify damages and there's also experts that we call upon to um, give us indications of the, uh, of the, the, the the amount of money that somebody's going to need for the rest of their life as a result of an injury in order to, uh, to, to help them get by. And the very idea of a clinical negligence claim is to get somebody some money that will try and put them back in the position that they would have been but for the injury. Uh, financial sums can, can't really do that but it's the, it's the best legal um, avenue that we've got to help people. In clinical negligence, we're expert-led, which means we need to find expert specialists in order to prove a client's claim. Often, at times, we require more than one expert on a case, which means that sometimes there are competing allegations of negligence, and it's really helpful to have a conference where we all get together, including the client, to discuss our concerns so that we ensure we have a really strong case for our client. A person who considers that they might have received substandard medical practice should seek legal advice without delay. They should seek advice as soon as possible because there are strict time limits pursuing claims for damages. There's also difficulties investigating cases and you need as much time as you can to properly investigate a case and to ready it for court. You also need to deal with your problems as quickly as possible. So if a person suffered as a result of medical and malpractice, then they might be able to get themselves private treatment and support with their bills that they desperately need. Um, and so you could have a person who can't work or you could have a person who um, has uh, who's struggling to get by on a day-to-day -day basis but if they pursue a claim for damages and they do so promptly and they can get some help and they can pay for a care package that will come in and and start to alleviate some of their needs and let them live their life let, or, or let them uh, even better if they could get some early rehabilitative treatment that is going to utterly change their outcomes um, then that would be fantastic and that's, a, that, that's what you're aiming for in a clinical negligence case. You, you're hoping to make a difference. Um, and with early intensive rehabilitation and um, with, with, with the country's leading specialists with private funding, then you could change the course of a, a person's life. We have an amazing array of resources. We have um, skills and experience like you wouldn't believe. We have people who, uh, um, who specialise in court of protection work, for example. We ha um, have um, connections locally, for example. Um, we have connections with charity partners and we have connections with local advocacy services. And we can put people in touch with other people that can really help them uh, on their journey. I'm currently working on a case where a child was misdiagnosed with diabetes over a period of years. At Slater and Gordon, we understand that the sooner somebody receives help and the rehabilitation that is recommended by our medical experts, the better chance of recovery there will be. I have obtained an interim payment from the defendant to arrange cognitive behavioural therapy to ensure that the client receives prompt treatment and allows them the best chance of recovery possible. I carried out extensive research to ensure that I got the best possible therapist with specialist expertise to ensure that the child got the best possible outcome.